This is my room. And this is my room in 3D. Creating it wasn't easy. I kind of lost my hopes, but I managed to do it faster than I ever expected. And here's how I did it. It's currently a little over 9 a.m. Today's the day I want to try out this thing that I've had in my mind for a while now. The idea is to create a 3D version of my office here using only Blender and my old iPhone here. And to not fall in this pit of perfection where I spent six weeks tediously crafting each individual detail, I've given myself one single day to create it, meaning I've got from sunrise to sunset. And since I've already slept through the first two hours of that, that means I'm left with about 11 hours to do all of this. But that should be enough, right? So there's two ways I can think of to do this, modeling everything by hand or photo scanning each object individually. The first of which feels like the obvious choice to me since I feel fairly comfortable in my modeling skills and not to mention I have zero experience with photo scanning and from what I've seen online it seems pretty hard to do. Luckily I run a pretty tight ship on clutter in my room so the amount of objects I would need to model is limited but still I have quite some stuff in just the gear for recording my videos alone and not to mention all the stuff in the back here. So that's a total of 30 objects, which is quite a lot. And I just calculated and it means I only have 24 minutes per object. Yeah, that's not a whole lot of time, but it might just be doable if I get somebody else's help with the modeling. Smeeve! Hello. Can you help me model some things? Wait, hold on. <laughs> do, do you want me to... Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So I just did a little test scan for this camera lens here and, well, it's not great to say the least. So I'm using the Kiri app to scan since I only want to use my phone and I'm seeing great results on their website, but I can't seem to replicate that. However, I think modeling really isn't an option time-wise, so... Yeah, time to learn how to photo scan, I guess. Okay, so apparently there's a couple of things you have to pay attention to when photo scanning. First of all, the lighting needs to be as uniform as possible. So I'm going to scan in my living room as it gets a decent amount of light from two sides and had enough space to let me add two additional lights, which I normally use for recording and still walk around the objects to make photos. Second, it's important you take enough photos with Kiri recommending at least 20, but preferably 70, which is also the max amount you can upload for free. For example, I took around 20 photos for the original scan I just showed you and that was definitely not enough. I actually have the pro or paid version of Kiri, meaning I can take up to 200 photos per object, which will definitely help in the final result. Apparently, it's important to maintain some overlap between each photo and use a steady angle and hand as much as possible. Honestly, I kind of suck at this, but <laughs> Kiri has the option to automatically take photos for you, which makes focusing on your object maybe a little bit easier easier, but I kind of like doing it manually because it gives me more control. Finally, there's a big caveat as you apparently can scan any object that's reflective, see-through or very uniformly colored using photogrammetry, which I didn't believe, but they were right. Oh, no. <laughs> Luckily for me, it's not like half of my objects fall under this category, right? So having spent about an hour on all that, here's the second attempt for the camera lens, which I'm happy to say came out much, much better. Good enough actually to use in my scene. To get it inside a blender, I just need to export it from the app. Now look how cool that is with some lights lighting it up. I have to say it's kind of strange and magical seeing this thing I'm so used to seeing in real life on my desk here move around in 3D space on my computer. Now I know you're probably thinking at this point, don't most of these apps actually have you pay to export your scans? Hello, I like money. Which sucks especially since you just spent a significant amount of time trying to scan it. Well, the great thing about Kiri is that they let you scan as many objects as you like and then export up to three per week. Completely free, 
no watermarks or anything. And if you need more than those three, you can either pay for them individually or you can simply upgrade to Kiri Pro, which lets you export unlimited amounts. Not only does it allow me to scan all 30 objects in a single day, but it also gives me the option to automatically remesh these into quad topology during export and it can generate PBR textures from the scan, resulting in better looking assets. It's actually quite impressive. So it's now 10.25 and time is absolutely fine. And if I still want to be able to get this done today, I really need to get started. Cue the music, it's time for a montage. Remember me saying this? You apparently can scan any object as reflected, see through, or very uniformly colored. Yeah. That turned out to be a bigger problem than I expected. So I resorted to the almighty internet to see if there's any solution to this problem. And while browsing through Kiri's own website, I noticed this blog post here. Turns out that this little magic button here in the app, which I've now glanced over dozens of times, is actually a real lifesaver for this project. It's called featureless object mode. And apparently it's powered by something called neural surface reconstruction technology, which uh, are some big words to say. Anyways, this thing was a uh, game changer because not only is it doing a great job at a lot of the uniformly colored objects of which there were quite a few but it is especially amazing for complex large shapes like for example my monitor desk mount and this very shiny and intricate cute little fella i picked up on my trip to japan it surprised me that some of the objects i thought to be incredibly hard to scan beforehand actually got amazing results and other seemingly simple objects seem to be very, very hard to do. And so after trying and failing miserably for over an hour straight, I ran into a major issue. Seven of the total 30 objects were just unscannable. Having spent a little over four hours scanning and with still so much to do, I kind of lost my hopes of achieving this on time. But then it hit me. I remembered seeing this great video by Ian Hubert uh, long time ago actually, where as he explains you can simply model the basic shape of whatever you're trying to create and then cube project on your texture. So I took some pictures of each object, some from each angle, like this cabinet, and some only from one angle due to their simple shape. In Blender, this is roughly the process I used. For the flatter objects, I loaded in the picture I took and simply traced the basic shape using the knife tool. I then removed the rest of the plane and extruded the leftovers to give it some depth. In certain cases, I traced additional shapes with the knife tool to extrude these in or out. For the more complex objects, I modeled their shapes using a cube as the base. I then scaled these to roughly fit the shape of the object I was making, added loop cuts and insets to add in details, added in bevels and made sure the object looked sort of similar to its real life counterpart. Then it was just a matter of box projecting the UVs, applying the photos as a texture and aligning the other sides of the mesh with different parts of the texture so it looks right. I also did this for my desk which was not included in the original 30 objects as it was too big to move and scan. And from the objects I had to model, this was by far the most complex one. Yet. It was still simple and basic enough to be able to do it relatively quick. Now I had 31 models ready to go, but no room to spare. So since my phone is pretty old, it lacks quite a few things of the newer models, like for example, a LiDAR scanner. So even though Kerry offers the option to scan your room using LiDAR, I can't. I wish though, because I wouldn't have had to completely deconstruct my room as I can just scan the entire thing in one go and simply turn it into a 3D asset. Anyways though, I have to find a different solution since I also can't photo scan it as I can't really rotate around it. So instead, I did the same for the room as for the modeling. I took a good photo of each individual wall and the floor, ensuring an as flat as possible image, created the basic shape of my room, and then cube projected the textures on there. Now it's just a matter of adding loop cuts, cutting the mesh up with the knife tool, and extruding and shaping any relevant geometry to make it look good. I especially did this for the sound foam panels on my walls, the wall mountain planks behind me, and particularly for the roller blind and the window, which I wanted to be able to go up and down and provide light just like the actual thing. The window wall, however, didn't actually emit any light, so 
I duplicated the material, added it to a new material slot and assigned it to only the faces which were the actual window. Now I can take this new material, plug the texture into the emission color and set the value to sort of match the amount of light my room normally gets. By actually making the roller blind using a simple cylinder and extruding one edge, I can then create shape keys for an up and down state, resulting in a simple controller to make the room dark or light. Since I enabled Kiri's AI object masking, there's hardly any cleanup I need to do and most objects turned out great, which is again going to save me a bunch of time. In some cases, a few loose parts remain, but I can very easily remove those in Blender. As a little side note, I was actually clever enough to actually take photos of the room before removing everything, so I knew where things roughly went to make the whole editing process a little bit faster. And I want this to look good, so I'm gonna take as much time as possible putting in these assets one by one, making sure their skill matches the scene, they're in the right place, and they're rotated properly. You'll now notice why having proper lighting when scanning is so important. As you can see, all the scans have similar lighting, meaning that they all match together, and the scanned lighting doesn't interfere with the scene lighting I've added in. Now, the lighting I used isn't perfect by any means, but it's good enough. It makes for at least a more realistic scanned object. I'm also adding in lights into this scene to match the lights in my room and I'm matching the original intensity. Having reference photos for all of this will also help save time again. By the way, if you want to start photo scanning as well, there's a link to the Kiri app down in the description. It truly is quite fun to do and to see your personal belongings appear in 3D is something special. Their app is free, so you know, go ahead and give it a try. Finally, I'll spend a little bit of time adding in some fine details like the cables on my desk. Now, with everything in its place, I just about have enough time left to add in a simple camera animation entering the room and have a cool transition between the light and dark versions of it. Before starting this project, I was heavily doubting whether or not this was possible in a single day. But to me, this goes to show how much a single artist can do these days with very little time using some of these fancy new tools. Is it perfect? No, not by a long shot. But it is very good for the amount of work I've put in. And so without further ado, I'm proud to present the final animation.